Hello everybody, welcome back to Red Tool House. In this video, we're going to start playing around with some electrified poultry netting. If you're new to Red Tool House and don't know what we're all about, check out our channel trailer right here and episode 000 where we introduce everybody to our setup. Okay, so what do we have going on here? Well, I'm standing in the backyard of the house and in the past, we've had a small garden here. We've, um, we've done regular kind of in the ground garden. We've done raised beds. We've done um, straw bell gardening. I've got the Hugel Mound back there. There's a video linked to it here uh, where we did our Hugel Mound. Uh, just different things we've experimented with. This ground here where I'm standing is an old cut. In fact, <clears throat> I'm going to turn the camera around here. Look at our ugly pool that we haven't put together for the season yet. <clears throat> but you can see this hill slope here. Maybe here would be the best way to get that angle. So you can see this slope of the backyard used to not be here. Or at least not be, be this shape. It used to come down gradually and actually make it all the way over to that side. So it was kind of just a gradual hill. The elevation of the dirt was probably about eight feet here. So what we did when we prepared this house site, we came into the dozer, of course, cut a chunk, pushed our overburden over to make this, this nice flat spot. So the only downside to that is no topsoil. This was an old, this, this slope was an old apple orchard and it had died out and there wasn't really anything worth uh, uh, saving on that. In fact, it was pretty much just scrub. So there wasn't even really any good topsoil there. So when we, we did the dozer work, we just kind of scraped it all out. In hindsight, I wish I would have kept some of it because there's a chance that there could have been you know, better than what we had here with all this raw, sterile dirt, sterile earth that we exposed. A lot of it was sandstone. Really not much of, a, of an environment to, to grow any grass or to grow anything for that matter. So you're looking at about 15 years of, of uh, buildup of, of soil and, there, and there's really not much of anything. We just got some grass that grows, a little bit of clover. So our attempts to do any gardening here have been kind of poor. Even with the raised beds, even with the straw bell gardening, I mean, those, had, uh, those definitely allowed us to grow some things, but there were pluses and minuses to that, uh, that process. So what are we doing here that, with all this poultry netting that looks like a concentration camp? Well, the game plan is we have Camlin's chickens, which we've done videos about that. I'm running out of links to reference to, but we'll, do, we'll reference a video here. Uh, Cam has his 15 egg laying chickens for his side business. Cam's my youngest son, 12 years old. So he has his egg laying birds in one of my tractors right now. And we're doing um, about 100 broilers. So I need to get his chickens out of my tractor so I can get my broilers in the appropriate numbers in the right tractors. So I've got three tractors that I'm running. I need you know, roughly about 33 per, per tractor. So I need to get his birds out of that tractor and get them somewhere else. Well, we've looked at different options with his chickens. I don't want to necessarily integrate them in with my large flock uh, because he wants to keep his side business. He wants to be able to track his egg sales and his expenses and all that. And as soon as we mix those together, then we lose that. So instead of blending those chickens together, we wanted to still have them in their own little area where they could be standalone. And we thought, well, let's try this. We, you know, we've, we've never really done portable poultry netting before. That's a mouthful to say. Um, so we thought we'd give it a shot and a lot of people had success with it. We ordered uh, Premier One poultry netting. This is a 164 foot length. I believe this is the longest single length you can get. Obviously if you need more length you can buy multiple strands of, of 164 and I know there's smaller lengths that they have. But this is one strand we wanted to try of 164 feet. And as you can see it kind of have this going into two different paddocks. The game plan is we're just going to do a small backyard garden here this year. Uh, we always have plans to do bigger gardens and pfft, seems like everything else gets in the way of that. So we're going to, this area is probably our most fertile in this area. We're going to do the back to Eden method using the wood chips, um, deep mulch, and just do a small garden here. Well, we have deer issues big time and a deer can jump right over this no problem, but we're hoping, we're gonna test and see if the electrified poultry netting, before they decide to jump, they get a zap from that and uh, maybe it discourages them. We also, your deer normally don't jump into a container. They wouldn't jump into this small area here. So I don't know, I say that before and you know how that happens. But this area here where I'm standing, this will be the chicken area. Cause we obviously we don't want the chickens in the garden necessarily tearing all that up. We'll let them over here where I've got some composted manure 
Got our Hugel bed, which I haven't done anything with yet. Not sure I'm going to do anything this year with it or not. Again, just running out of time. But we'll have the chickens in here. And they can come in here and scratch and eat all this down, of course, and, and fertilize it nicely. Hope we can start to get some buildup. They'll even scratch into this composted manure and get it turned so it composts more. Well, the thing we don't have that you obviously see is we don't have any type of accommodations for them. Now, I'm currently working on a project, and it's another video that I haven't put together yet because I'm not completed with it. But we have a phone, we have a um, small chicken coop, one of our first ones we have. I always refer to it as the phone booth coop. It's just a four by four. And we're going to make it mobile. Right now, it's just on two skids, and uh, while it's not anchored to the ground, it's not something I can easily pick up and move. I have to use a tractor bucket, lash it to it, and do all that type of stuff to move it, and easily tear up ground while I'm doing it. What I'm working on is actually putting a, a uh, set of wheels, an axle underneath it, and a, and a trailer hitch so we can hook it up to the side-by-side -side and drive it from point A to point B. So the plan will be to have the, the phone booth coop here and let the chickens hang out here for a while till they eat it down. They kind of burn up the grass or you know, they, they wear the grass too much. And then we'll start to unwind this and just move it to different areas. I can go that way toward the house where our trampoline is, or I can even turn and start going up this hill uh, behind the camera, behind the pool, and still have an area fenced off here uh, to, keep the, uh, to keep the deer out. So last night we did kind of an impromptu unboxing of the Premier One. We wanted to do it before it got dark and just test it. I don't have it electrified yet. I don't even have my charger out here yet. Uh, but we wanted to, to lay it out and just see how this would work. The, the one thing that I ran into was how do you determine, I mean, I can't, top of my mind, think, okay, 164 linear feet is what this is going to look like. So starting at one point and making sure you come back around to finish, not the easiest thing to do. Granted, if you were just doing a square or a circle, you could just keep <clears throat> making that smaller so you could meet. But in this situation, we wanted to start here, go around the garden, come back on itself, and then, of course, do the loop. So we had kind of a, um, an area within an area. But I was really happy with, with how this is uh, at least unboxed so far. Again, haven't tested it yet as far as electricity goes, putting anything on it and see what I get. But you know, here's the little clip where, we, uh, where we'll hook our power up to. Uh, so we'll have our, our charger here with our ground rod here. Um, I've heard people complain that this stuff really isn't that easy to move or take down. But I think if you look at the, um, the literature that comes with it, the, the plan is really to, as long as you take it down in a section and you lay it a certain orientation each time, and then go back and collect it. And almost like you're folding up drapes or, or you're trying to carry a large thing of material. You want to let each of those uh, posts rest in this hand and the, and the material hang down. And Because we actually put this together one way and decided, well, we want to put it together another way. So we put it up, took it back down, and put it up again. And it really didn't take long at all. Now, it was very helpful to have two people. Uh, I, I carried the bundle while Kelly uh, walked around and stuck the stakes in the ground. And then, of course, you know, as you see, some like this, this is one little weird area we have that I need to maybe move this corner back and tighten this up. But that's uh, kind of the neat thing. You can use just regular step-in posts, uh, plastic step-in posts, to support this fence in areas. Because obviously it's plastic. It's not going to ground it out. It's not going to be an issue there. So we're anxious to see how that works. And we'll, uh, we'll keep you all updated once we get the phone booth coupe on its wheels and in here and get this electrified. We'll obviously do a follow-up video on that. So while we're on the subject of unboxing, I wanted to share something with you all that I received in the mail the other day, and it's really cool. There's a guy by the name of Tom, and Tom has a YouTube channel called Hilltop Machine Works. And uh, Tom has been in communication with me for a little bit. He, uh, when I broke my tractor, he offered to machine the part that I broke, um, and I really appreciated him putting that offer out there. I actually threw that part away and I bought the replacement so I didn't have something to send to him as a template to make the new one. But um, he watched the video that we did of using a cordless drill to, to wind up the, um, my 17 gauge fence wire that I was taking down and saw my, uh, my makeshift way of doing that and he had pity on me. <clears throat> and being the awesome machinist that he is, he manufactured from scratch his own design of a fence winder. And I'm going to unbox this here. Now, um, Tom told me he was working on this, so it wasn't like uh, I was totally shocked and didn't know what I was getting. So I appreciate him, uh, again, taking that time to do so and reaching out to me. If you want to check out his channel, just go to uh, the link I'll post up here, but also put it down in the description as well. 
he actually did a video of making this um, winder for me. So it's kind of cool. I was watching it the other day and and uh, really enjoyed uh, watching his process. So the cool thing about this, and again, I'm not going to spoil it uh, for the video. If you want to see how he made it and his description and, and thought process behind it, then you can watch the video. But again, I thought it was pretty cool to, uh, that's why I love this whole uh, YouTube family network. It's just, um, we get to share ideas together and, and uh, each person has a different skill set that they bring to the table in our discussions. And then obviously here's a tangible example of skill set. So it's really cool. He's got, um, he milled an element like a, a chuck that'll fit in my drill. So my drill will fit in there. Unfortunately, my drill's on the other side of the property right now, <clears throat> down at the wood shop. Um, so the drill just mounts up here and he's got bearings in this. So this thing spins freely. So this, I can hold this handle. So while this is spinning, winding up that fence, he's got a little hole there to start the fence on, uh, just winds it right up. So where I was using a stick and a old piece of uh, metal tubing from the pool, he's got this pretty handy dandy tool. So Tom, man, I appreciate you doing that. Thank you so much for that. Again, guys, if you, if you want to see what Tom's got going on over his machine shop, he's got a really cool shop. If you like machining, you like that manufacturing uh, stuff, extremely interesting. Go check it out um, and uh, be sure to subscribe to his channel if you, if you go over there and check it out. And again, appreciate you doing this. Now again, I don't expect people to send us gifts. Uh, that's, that's not what we're in here for. We're not pleading to get freebies from you. But again, it's just really cool when... Uh, when you see people have expertise in other areas and share that expertise, uh, whether it's in advice or whether it's in tangible items, it's really cool. That's why I don't mind. I mean, I love anytime anybody asks me a question, if I could provide a, a sound answer, then I'll be more than happy to do so. Sometimes I'll even provide answers that aren't sound. Uh, but I really enjoy this, this community element that we have on the channel. Well, the day that I'm recording this uh, is the day before the big day, before we get the dozer brought in. So I'm really excited. I'm I've been doing my anti-rain dance to try to keep it from raining. We've had rain in the forecast for the past three days, like 80 or 90% chance of heavy downpours, and it hasn't rained any of those three days. I'm hoping that trend keeps going, but sometimes the way my luck is that it'll rain cats and dogs for the next two days. So, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, we'll either have a dozer sitting here in the rain, and we'll take really good pictures of it sitting idle, or uh, we'll be able to move some dirt. So uh, that is tomorrow that the dozer arrives, and we'll do some video of that as well. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, be sure to subscribe below and check us out on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Red Tool House Farm. Take care, everybody.